Your new Hewlett Packard portable oscilloscope combines simplicity of operation with laboratory quality performance. From initial setup to measurement completion, you'll find your portable as easy to use as other scopes with far fewer features. The front panel controls are grouped according to function. The power switch, all CRT controls, and the one volt calibrator are located next to the CRT. All vertical controls and inputs are directly below the CRT. Channel A controls and channel B controls. The time base and horizontal position controls are grouped on the right side along with the sweep and trigger functions which are controlled by these push buttons. The delayed sweep controls are further separated into this shaded vertical strip. This convenient grouping of controls by function can save you considerable time in making measurements. To obtain a trace, first release all push buttons. Select main sweep, one millisecond sweep time, delayed sweep time off, channel A, and position all controls to 12 o'clock. After a trace appears, adjust intensity and focus for a sharp display. In the vertical control grouping, these concentric switches select either a single or dual channel display and display triggering. The volt per division control selects deflection sensitivities from 10 millivolts per division to 5 volts per division, and the vernier decreases the sensitivity between sweep ranges. The vertical coupling and grounding switches are located immediately above the input connector. This push button selects channel B display polarity and is used primarily when in the A plus B mode. As with some of the other push buttons, the function outlined in black indicates the mode when the push button is out. Now let's make some signal measurements. First we'll look at a rise time measurement, then some timing measurements using two modes of triggering. Here is a display of a pulse train. The trigger level control is used to obtain stable triggering. Rise time measurements are easily made by using the 10 and 90 percent dots on the CRT graticule. First, adjust the vertical attenuator and vernier for exactly six divisions of vertical amplitude. For maximum measurement resolution, increase the sweep speed until the rise time interval is at least half the width of the display. If this is not possible, as in this case where we're using the fastest sweep speed, position the rise time interval to center screen and press the times 10 magnifier for improved resolution. Position the 10% point on the leading edge on a vertical line. Count the divisions to the 90% point and multiply by the main sweep setting. Since in this case the sweep is magnified, divide the result by 10. Now let's make some timing measurements using the two trigger sources, A only and normal. We will also demonstrate the features of the scope in the dual channel modes. The alternate and chop modes each display two traces, one for each vertical channel. The third dual channel mode is A plus B, which algebraically combines the two traces. In the A only triggering mode, both traces are triggered by the signal connected to channel A to preserve timing relationships. The other trigger mode is called normal, where each sweep is triggered by its own input signal. First, let's look at an example of channel A only triggering. In this alternate display, we are observing a timing pulse on channel A and a digital word on channel B. To measure the time difference, 
between the timing pulse and the first bit pulse, center both traces vertically. Then increase the sweep speed until the pulses are horizontally separated by the maximum viewable amount. Position the leading edge of the timing pulse on the left-hand graticule line and count the divisions to the leading edge of the first bit pulse. Multiply by the sweep time setting and you have the time difference. Because both channels were triggered by channel A, you have confidence that this is the true time interval. Time relationships could also be preserved by using the timing pulse to externally trigger the scope. If two waveforms must be compared on the same time scale, such as the input and output of an amplifier, switch to normal triggering. Here the time relationship between the two traces is lost, but their wave shapes are easily compared. In the normal mode, selecting low frequency reject removes the DC positioning voltage from the trigger signal. This results in the most stable display. In addition to the alternate sweep mode, the chop sweep mode is also useful, especially at slower sweep rates. For this display, the clock rate has been slowed and the bit width increased. The slow sweep speed results in display flicker in the alternate mode. This can be eliminated by selecting the chopped mode. The time relationship is still preserved by using channel A only or external triggering. As the sweep speed is increased in the chopped mode, some information is lost in one channel while the other channel is being displayed. Here, you should return to the alternate mode. This is the second in a series of service videotapes on the Hewlett Packard Model 1700 series oscilloscopes. In this presentation, we will discuss the theory of operation of the unique circuits and offer some troubleshooting tips. The information presented will be more useful if you are familiar with the basic circuits used in oscilloscopes. The unique circuits to be discussed are the power supply and time-based trigger circuits. The 1700 series scopes accept power from three sources, AC line, an optional internal battery, or external DC. The AC input is rectified, filtered, and limited to approximately 33 volts DC. Therefore, at the power mode switch, there is a selection of three DC voltages. This DC can range from 11.5 to 36 volts, depending on the source selected. A unique, highly efficient DC to DC converter is used to provide the DC voltages required in the operating circuits of the 1700. This converter changes the selected DC input to AC. This AC is then converted back to the DC levels required by the 1700 circuits. Let's look in more detail at how this conversion is accomplished. An oscillator in the converter changes the DC to a rectangular waveform. This AC is then coupled through a power transformer to a rectifier filter. Secondary taps provide the AC levels required for each DC output. The plus 15 volt output is used as a regulator reference. Any variations in the plus 15 through the regulator change the saturation level in a transformer. This saturation level in turn changes the frequency and duty cycle of the oscillator. This oscillator therefore tracks the plus 15 output. All outputs are thus maintained at a specified level. If all outputs are out of tolerance and cannot be adjusted, the trouble can be isolated to either the regulator or the oscillator circuit. First, disconnect the regulator. Then, using a variac in the AC line input, reduce the DC at the converter input to 24 volts. A properly operating oscillator and rectifier 
will provide DC outputs within 10% of normal, even without the regulator. With this setup, all outputs within 10% of normal indicate the troubles in the regulator. All outputs out of tolerance by more than 10% indicate that the oscillator is causing the problem. If only one of the outputs is out of tolerance, check the rectifier filter for that output. The auto sweep mode can be helpful in isolating time-based troubles. With a vertical input signal connected and no sweep in either normal or auto mode, select the auto mode. Then lift this collector lead. This transistor is now turned on regardless of the input. Under these conditions, a properly operating auto circuit will supply plus 15 volts at this point. With plus 15 volts here and still no display, check for troubles in the sweep circuits, the gate, integrator, comparator, and mobile vibrator. If the sweep operates now, but does not operate with this collector reconnected, first check this transistor. If it checks OK, the integrated circuit may be causing the trouble. Refer to the manual for IC test points. In the trigger assembly for delayed sweep models, the main and delayed trigger integrated circuits are identical and may be interchanged to determine if one is defective. One final point, the 1700 trigger circuit is very sensitive and may trigger on system or high frequency noise on the input signal. Selecting high frequency reject improves triggering on noisy signals below 50 kilohertz. We've discussed the unique power supply and trigger circuits designed for the 1700 series scopes. A more detailed theory of operation of these and the other 1700 circuits can be found in the operating and service manual. If further assistance is required, please contact your local Hewlett-Packard sales and service office.